Hey everybody, welcome to Buratech. In this episode, we're gonna be asking the question, should you look at other people's code to get better? All right, welcome back. Before we start this video, I wanna make sure that you like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. So if you wanna to learn to code or you want to get better at code, should you look at other people's code to see how they solve their problems? The answer is absolutely yes. And this is one of those things that a lot of schools don't teach you at all. Now, it used to be a fairly common joke in the industry that looking at other people's code was very time consuming and frankly weird, but over the years, a lot more people have been reverse engineering other people's code to learn. And this is one thing that I did when I was learning to code. Now, of course, learning to code is not a destination. Remember that success is a wheel. And of course, learning to code, again, you're not just gonna learn to code and stop learning. You're gonna always have to learn. And one of the ways that I like to do this is to just simply look at other people's code. So there's really two parts to looking at other people's code. The first part is to actually look at other people's code and figure out the logic. Sometimes they might do things a little bit differently and you might think that is right or wrong, or you might look at that and say that's a much better idea. Lots of times when I look at other people's code, I am usually impressed at how concise a lot of these professional coders are. When I write code, sometimes I add in way too much extraneous features or have in way too many lines. Remember, your code needs to be as simple as possible and as readable as possible. The other side is to run programs and tinker around with the code and possibly improve it. Now, if you spend maybe about an hour a month on reverse engineering and tinkering with other people's code, I think that's an hour well spent. You always need to look back at the way you do things as a coder to make sure that you are going to become the best coder in the future. Remember that you as a coder need to be future focused. And what I mean by that is that future you or future coding you should be better and you need to take steps today to make sure that future you is much better than current you. So how do you look at other people's code? Well, one way that I like to do this is to simply look at text tutorials and text tutorials, you can basically look at other people's code. The other thing you can do is to go onto GitHub and to just download projects and run them. This is something that I like to do. And sometimes I don't even run them. I just look at a few files here and there and I look at the code and I say, hey, look, this is really good or I don't like this as much. And by looking at other people's GitHub, you get a clear sense of looking at other people's code. So like I said, a lot of schools don't actually teach this and in other disciplines people are constantly reverse engineering other people's work this happens from everything in engineering and frankly the arts do this quite a bit so if you want to be a good writer a good actor or a good musician you are constantly reverse engineering the great works of the past and this process is not often not applied to code and one of the reasons is that technology changes so much if you look at code from maybe 10 years ago it might be completely unreadable now let Luckily, there are a lot of coding languages that are standing the test of time, such as JavaScript and C++. And some of the code in these languages are becoming timeless. And of course, not every bit of code will be timeless, but you should try and reverse engineer as much as you possibly can. So let me know in the comments, do you spend time reverse engineering other people's code? Is it worthwhile for you? I want to know your comments down below. Remember that this channel does new Patreon and we sell our digital products down below. The more money we get from the content that you buy below, the more products we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We have everything from web development tutorials to machine learning tutorials to game development tutorials and more. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month. If you really like this channel, please subscribe. We have monthly and yearly options. Our goal is to get to 10,000 monthly subscribers. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.